Securities and Exchange Act of 1934, there is a section, Section 10B, that prohibits fraud in relation to transactions and securities. And the SEC has implemented that in a rule called Rule 10B-5. Rule 10B-5 says that in connection with a transaction and security, you can't commit fraud or intent to mislead or deceive people. It's considered to be a fraud on the company whose information it is. You're taking an opportunity that belongs to the company. Generally, there's been understood that the person who uses the information has to have some sort of fiduciary relationship to the company whose information they're using. Insider trading is illegal. It's a criminal act, as the law is currently understood, but it was never created by Congress. So Congress never came out and said, we are going to create this criminal statute that prohibits insider trading. Instead, what happened is that the courts started to develop this understanding of 10b-5 and uh, Section 10b of the Exchange Act as prohibiting insider trading. You have this creation of a criminal provision by unelected judges. The judges, in order to make insider trading fit within 10b, have had to make sure that it's tied to fraud. So there's been a lot of case law trying to develop this where you see the court struggling to keep tying it back to the common law fraud elements to make sure that they're staying within what the statute actually authorizes. Because we've been building this crime from scratch in the courts, what we have is a lot of uncertainty where it has been difficult for people to decide whether what they're doing is actually a crime or not, which is really problematic. One of the highest sentences that has actually been imposed was 10 years, but still that is a very serious crime and that's a serious amount of time that we're asking people to go to jail for something where it can be difficult for people to know whether they're actually breaking the law or not. The same information passed along by the same person can result in liability if the conversation was with a friend or relative, but the same conversation with a stranger does not impart liability. There's no statute written down, so there's no place to go back to and say, well, what is really prohibited? That is exactly the kind of uncertainty we do not want in criminal law. We don't want people to be uncertain whether the conversation they're having has criminal liability or not. Thank you.